So you've either got yourself a NAS, you're thinking about getting a new NAS, maybe you don't have a NAS at all, and you're thinking, what NAS should I get? Because there is so many options out there. There's lots of options, lots of different disk configurations. You can get single bay, you can get dual bay, you can get ones with four, with eight, with a lot more. You can get desktop based NASs, which is like a little square, little rectangle box that you can put on your desk, you can put inside of a, under a cupboard, whatever it is, or you can get one that is a little bit more enterprisey that you can rack inside of a like a server cabinet or something like that but sort of where do you start it's always very very overwhelming sometimes around what nas to get because you can go and spend a lot of money or you can spend just a little bit of money and what i've got i'm going to show you a terra master nas now terra master is a brand that has been around for a while they do some awesome nases and they're a little bit cheaper than some of the more high-end ones. And when I say high-end NASs, I'm really talking here about the ones that are the most you know, used across the businesses, across homes, Synology, QNAP. They're generally the bigger ones. There's a few others out there. And then you're sort of looking at the prices of a Synology NAS and you may be looking at the comparison, which is a TerraMaster NAS and thinking to yourself, self, is the TerraMaster NAS any good. Now I've used both the high-end versions, the Synologies, etc., and I've also used the TerraMaster. I've got myself a TerraMaster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you the device itself. We'll look at the different sorts of features that the TerraMaster NAS has. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the specs of the unit, and then we'll go and set one of these things up and show you what you can actually do on the NAS. Because the NAS, it is a storage device, right? I mean, ultimately that's the whole point, is you wanna be able to put your hard drives inside of the unit, and then you store all of your documents, your movies, TV shows, home movies, whatever you wanna put on there. And then because it's a NAS, a network attached storage, you share it across your network. So computers in your home, in your office, in your business, can actually access the data on the TerraMaster NAS, which is really, really cool. That's why I love NASs. But the other big thing that you can do with them is to get applications up and running onto them. You can actually install apps. It's like got its own app store. Think about the iOS app store, the Android app store, where you go and download applications for your phones, tablets, what have you. But this has also its own app store, so you can go and download applications, set it up as like a media server, you can do all these other cool things, set it up with security, with a VPN, whatever it is, really, really cool. Let's go and check it out. Oh, but before we do go and do that, do remember to click on the subscription button, click on the button, and especially click on that bell. That way you get notified when we are releasing new videos here on All Things Tech. All right, let's go and check out our Terra Master NAS. So this one right here is the F2223. And of course the two stands for two bay. You can sort of see that there's two slots. You can open these slots up and you throw hard drives inside of them and they click in the back and you're good to go. You've got all the little LED lights on the, on the front to sort of let you know what is going on. The back, you've got your HDMI, USB-Cs, and my one came with dual Ethernet, which is awesome, so that if you lose one, you have another one. You can also do other sorts of things like teaming, where you can get a lot more performance and speed out of your network points. Big old fan on the back, and this thing is great. I love this little NAS, because it's small, it's compact, it's light, which is one of the good things about it. Some NASs can be really stinking heavy, and I don't like that. And this one comes with a big old two gigahertz process it can be turbo frequencies up to 2.9 that is amazing which means you can run not only all of your files all of your uh you know all of your data which is sort of the main purpose of a nas in the first place right is to stick all of your data in there and then have anybody in your home in your business to be able to access all of the data right in there but hey apart from that you've got a full-on app store you've got an app store that you can go and download applications directly onto your nas including something like Plex, Plex Media Server, to be able to store movies, TV shows, and then play them out on your network. And we'll show you towards the end of the video how to set up Plex, so you wanna stay tuned for that one. Now, as I said, there are two ethernet points, and these are 2.5 gigabit. So not gigabit ports, one gigabit ports, but 2.5 gigabit ports, which I love. DDR4 RAM, four gig of that, but you can also boost that up. And that's what I love about it, is if you want more grunt, you want more out of your NAS, you can go up to a 32 gig RAM. And hey, look at this thing. What's cool about this one is it comes with a brand new operating system, which is the TOS, the, the actual TerraMaster OS, version five as of this video. And this is jam-packed 
with more than 50 new features compared to the old one. So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do on it. And this is why I love NAS is they're not just for storing data, but they can do so much more. You can set it up as your security system, run apps, and all of that jazz. And then once the whole thing is all set up and ready to go, you can go and share it out on your network. So whether you've got a Windows, a Mac, a Linux computer, you can get all of those operating systems to talk to this NAS over your standard file protocols, such as SMB, NFS, iSCSI. So you can also set it up a little bit like a SAN on top of a NAS as well, which is really, really cool. That's a little bit about the actual NAS itself. You can do other stuff such as backups. You can get them all talking to each other, working really, really well in your network. Now, I love this one specifically for home labs. Yes, you can use them in businesses, but a home lab is probably the best spot to stick something like this. And the nice thing about TerraMaster is you can get even bigger ones. This is like the small entry level one, but then you can go and get ones that are four bay, five bay, and even bigger, even rack based ones, which are the really, really big old NASs, which you can stick inside of a data center, inside of a server room. Hey, now we're gonna go and show you how to set this thing up. So as long as you've got your ethernet cables plugged in, as long as it's got your power, and as long as something on your device can give it an IP address, you can log into it, access it via a browser, and we go and set it up. So now I've logged into my computer, and here comes the fun part where we're gonna configure our Terra Master NAS. Now, whether you're on a Windows, on a Mac computer, even on a Linux computer, you could do this from a smartphone if you really wanted to. As long as your Terra Master is connected on the ethernet with a network cable, and it's turned on, and you've got disks inside of it, now it should be discoverable on the network. Your TerraMaster has now probably been assigned an IP address as well. And if everything's worked, you should be able to open up a web browser and navigate to tnas.local, tnas.local. And you'll see that I've clicked on that. It now shows me in this initialization, TNAS, TerraMaster NAS, and it's given an IP address of 172.16.1.188. But the great thing is you can go and change this later on as you need to, all right? Everything's looking good, so I can now click on Start, and it'll start the initial process of setting up my TerraMaster NAS. So how do you want to do this? You can set up the default, or you can set up custom. Default means that it's going to adopt the default configuration, Whatever TerraMaster has said it will use, that is exactly what it will use, which relates to the simple and fast. It's gonna do all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna do default for now because this is our first installation of the TerraMaster NAS. We wanna make it as simple as possible. So we select our default. Now it's gonna install the TOS. And essentially this is the operating system. OS stands for operating system. It's going to go and set up the software to make the thing all run. Because ultimately it's a piece of hardware a big NAS with a whole bunch of disks, but it needs some software to actually get the smart configuration installed. So then you can then log into it and then start setting the whole thing up. So let's just give this a little bit of time. Now with the initial setup done, we now need to give the TerraMaster NAS a specific name. This is the name of your NAS, the host name of your NAS. I'm gonna call this thing Emilio Terra, okay? There is my name, Emilio Terra. Who is the main user? Is it gonna be you? Is it gonna be a pool of people? You can add more users later on, but give your main administrator account name right over here. I'm gonna call it Emilio, and then you're gonna put in a password and confirm that password. You're gonna put in an email. Now what'll happen is once you put in your email over here, you're gonna send a code to your email, and this it essentially just ensures that you are who you say that you are. Otherwise, if you can't receive the verification code, you can also skip this step. You've then got your end user agreement, okay? If you're fine with that, give it a quick bit of a read. You can say that you accept it. If you do, if you don't accept it, well, you can't really do much. Continue, confirm. Now, once it starts up, this is now creating what's called a storage pool, essentially a big pool of a whole bunch of disks. It's automatically synchronizing, so it's building it automatically for me in the background, and it's gone and created a volume and that is sitting within my storage pool under my hard drive. Let's go and set up Plex. And of course, Plex being that media server where you can actually get all of your movies, your TV shows, all of that sort of stuff, put into one single spot and stream them. Essentially play them on your phone, on your TV, on your tablets, other computers, 
on your network, super, super easy. Now with my NAS all set up and ready to go, one of the first things that I love to do with any NAS is to install the Plex Media Server. We can now go and open up the App Store, essentially the application area where uh, the App Central, where all of your applications are installed and managed, etc. And right over here is my Plex Media Server. If I click on that, take advantage of the 30 day free trial of Plex Pass. Well, I'm not gonna be using Plex Pass, uh, that's a whole different thing altogether unless you do some other stuff, but you can still install Plex completely for free and fully use it. So we're going to select install right over here. Okay, a little bit of information here about what it needs that this app requires the following shared folders. Fine, it'll do that. Plex, the default port of the Plex server will be that. You need to make sure that that is open. So if you're going to, if you're managing a firewall and things like that, that's good to know. Otherwise, it'll probably be open on your home or business network unless somebody has specifically blocked it, okay? Uh, reverse proxy will automatically be set up. Don't worry about that unless you really want to understand a little bit more of the technical uh, components about what that is. Uh, and that is it. Do you want to be able to enable port forwarding for Plex to be able to use this over the internet? This is a nice feature if you do want this or not. Essentially allowing you to access all of your Plex content over the internet. I probably don't recommend doing this because you're essentially exposing your NAS a little bit out to the internet. Not a good practice, I don't think, unless you really have a good, good security set up in place. Okay, so we're gonna select install. I'm gonna open up the app center, which of course is the spot where you install all of your applications. This is the central spot for all of your application installations and management. All right, I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom. And there it is, Plex Media Server. Now, if yours doesn't show up in there, you can click on all. You can actually search for it as well. You can just type in Plex and enter. And there it is. Organize beautifully, beauty, beautify, beautify, stream and share your personal collection of movies. Now it's going to go and download it. So what this will require is your NAS will need to be able to access the internet to be able to download that application and install it onto your NAS, okay? So it's downloading it, looking, looking good. To create a Plex account or sign in with a Plex account if you've already got one. If you don't have one, then you can log in using either a Google, Facebook or Apple uh, IDs accounts that you've already got or you can go and sign up with your email address so go ahead and do that we won't show you how to do that so just go ahead and sign up accordingly and once you've got that we then log in with our account once that's done we've now logged in now you will actually notice that one step before it's gone and created a brand new tab so here is my nas originally and you'll actually see that the ip address is exactly the same it's now just opening up the plex application within a new tab on my browser first things first is i need to give my Plex server a name. It's already you know, gone and defined Emilio Asustor because that's the name of my NAS. You can call this whatever you want, but when you have a device such as a phone or a TV, for example, running the Plex application, it's gonna scan the network and it's gonna find the Plex server that is called whatever you're gonna be calling it right here. So we're gonna go and uh, give that a specific name. Do you wanna allow access to this media from outside of your home or not? Up to you if you want to be able to access that data from outside of your home, essentially access the Plex over the internet. I personally prefer not to do that because it just punches a little bit of a hole on your NAS, exposing your NAS out to the internet. And I don't like to do that sort of thing. So I'm going to actually untick that, but you can do that if you so want to. And now we start configuring the Plex server to talk to the media that's sitting on your NAS. So we're going to go and create a library. What is the type of library that you want? Now, movies, TV shows, music, photos, and other, other options that we've got. I'm gonna be selecting the media type is movies. And the reason it's gonna be selecting different options here is because it's gonna go and scan the internet and look for databases of movies and compare them against movies that are actual movies in your folder. If you select TV shows and you point it to a movies folder on your NAS, it's not gonna pick up the right information. So make sure that you try to match up the categories, the types of data, the types of you know video files as closely as possible. So the first one that we're gonna do is movies. I'm gonna call it movies, you can call this whatever you want. You could call it Hollywood movies, Bollywood movies, whatever sort of movies that you want. And next, and I'm gonna go and browse for my media folder. And this is where I point the Plex server, which I'm setting up right here, the movies category that I've just selected, I'm gonna point it now to the movies folder that I have created and I've uploaded media to on my NAS. So let's do that. You'll see that I've got my media folder and in there I've got movies and that matches up to what we were looking at before. Over here, here is media and here is movies. 
So that will match up. That's exactly the same thing. Movies, there are all of my movies. I'm gonna say add, okay? And add library. Done, that's now created movies. Let's do one more. We're gonna go add library. And now I'm gonna select other videos. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because these videos that I've got are stuff that I've recorded, things that I've done myself. So it's not gonna to need to compare it against a database out on the internet. I don't want it to go and download cover art and a plot of a movie because it's my stuff. So I'm gonna select other videos. We're gonna call this travel vids. Next. And I'm now gonna point that to that one and add and add. Okay, that's the three that I'm gonna go and create. I'm gonna select next. If everything looks good, we're gonna select done. But before we do this, remember, you're now gonna go get your application set up. So you need to grab the Plex app for all your favorite devices. So any device on your network that you wanna be able to access the Plex server, remembering, remembering that our NAS is gonna act as the Plex server. It's gonna be turned on, all of your media sits on that. You now need another device, a TV with an Apple TV, an iPhone, an Android device. You get the Plex app that you can download from the app stores, install them on those devices. And as long as they're on the same network, it should find your Plex server. Done. Okay, now I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. Don't get freaked out. And the reason that is like that is because I've got an Aguero NAS. I've got another NAS. And I've also got my MacBook Pro running Plex servers because I've got several Plex servers running around the place. But the ones that we're concerned about are the ones that are under Emilio Asus store. Here are the three folders that we created, or the three categories, movies, TV shows, and travel videos. Yours will not have all of this other stuff, okay? Just, just be aware of that. Yours won't have all of that. But if I now go into here, you'll notice it's gone and actually found all of the cover art. For my movies, it's actually gone and downloaded the cover, the, the actual title, the video uh, poster, for example, of that movie. And if I click on this, you will see that it's also downloaded a little thing about the tagline and a little information about the movie itself. Now I can go and change whatever I want in here because when I open up the Plex application on my TV, for example, it's gonna show me all the information about this movie. Maybe I don't want it to say this, I wanna change it, you can go and change it. If you don't like the poster, you can go and change it. You can upload a new one. It's pretty, pretty easy. I've done the same thing for TV shows. Here it is, season five and all of the videos underneath it. I can go into here and you can see all the information about those movies, those TV shows. But now that this is set up, you should be able to now open up your personal device, your TV, your smartphone, and should be able to scan all of this. So what do you think? Was this helpful? Was it not helpful? Do you have one? Are you thinking about getting one? Have I swayed you into maybe looking and considering getting a TerraMaster NAS? They are really, really cool. Let us know down below in the comments what you think. And also, hey, we release videos here on all things tech. So you need to click on that button on the bell. Would love it if you did subscribe as well. Helps me to know whether you find this content helpful and helps me to also grow my channel. Really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video.